Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for Friday, June 4th, 2010, and now the news. Say, what's going to happen with the resale value of Mercury's now that the brand is being dropped? Not much. According to Auto Remarketing, since the Mercury brand did not carry any premium with it, resale values will not drop. It says the same thing happened when Chrysler dropped the Plymouth brand, but it also says the values of Pontiacs and Saturns dropped anywhere from 5 to 10 percent when GM announced it was getting rid of those brands. That's because, up to then, customers did pay a premium to buy those brands. When Peugeot set out to design an electric city car that can seat four people, it also wanted to completely change the way it makes a car. Autoline Daily was at this week's Challenge Bebendum in Rio de Janeiro and ran across Mark Boak of Peugeot, who talks about the performance aspects of the BB1. Uh, th- this car is equipped with two uh, engine wheels. Uh, made by Michelin, together with Michelin. Uh, each engine in each rear wheel has 10 horsepower, uh, of power, which is absolutely enough uh, to give very good performance to the car. 90 km an hour of uh, maximum speed, uh, 120 km of autonomy, which is more than enough to drive in the inner city. So I believe we have uh, uh, a compact car, a modern car, with a breakthrough design. Interestingly, the BB1 uses a tubular chassis developed by Peugeot's motor scooter division. Don't you hate bad roads? Of course you do, but help is on the way. A graduate student at the University of Rhode Island, Michelle Pelletier, has invented what she calls self-healing concrete. A micro-encapsulated sodium silicate healing agent is added to the mix of concrete. When the concrete begins to break up, the capsules rupture and release the healing agent. This reacts with another compound in the concrete, and it creates a gel-like material that hardens in a week. Her tests show that the concrete recovered 26% of its original strength, and she believes if a heavier concentration of the healing agent is added, it could further improve the strength of the concrete. The best part is, supposedly, this is a fairly inexpensive procedure. Hey, it's June, and that means the whole world is getting geared up for this month's World Cup soccer tournament. Even Mercedes-Benz is. According to Bloomberg, the company is launching a big advertising campaign and will also offer sales incentives in Germany. And if Germany wins the cup, Mercedes will pay customers up to 319 euros as part of a special lease offer. The company is doing this because it wants to attract younger buyers. Mercedes is seen as an old person's car in Germany because the average Mercedes driver is 10 years older than BMW and Audi owners, which, by the way, will not be offering incentives of their own during the World Cup. More details about the Renault, Nissan, Daimler alliance are starting to emerge. Wards reports that Infiniti's next generation G and M could be built on the Mercedes Benz E Class platform. Additionally, The redesigned Z car could get Daimler powertrains from the Mercedes S400 Hybrid and the E300 Bluetech. A diesel-powered sports car sure sounds like a lot of fun. Daimler's also expected to share some of Renault's new engines, including a 1.6-liter diesel with stop-start technology, as well as a range of small-displacement three- and four-cylinder gasoline engines expected out in 2012. Tesla has not turned a profit yet, but the electric sports car builder has made some money. According to Bloomberg, the company brought in nearly $14 million since 2008 by selling zero-emission vehicle credits to other automakers. Although Honda is so far the only buyer that's been named, it snapped up the equivalent of 368 cars worth and is contracting for an additional 287. The credits are needed to meet California's strict pollution regulations. In related electric vehicle news, the Wall Street Journal reports that the range of BMW's battery-powered Mini E is falling short of estimates. Based on a U.S. EPA driving cycle, the car was supposed to get nearly 160 miles on a charge, but in real-world testing, it seems most lessees are only getting around 100 miles. 
The best any driver in the program has managed is just 127 miles. The car does well around town, but sustained highway driving really drains the battery. By the way, Nissan also used the same test procedure to estimate the driving range of the Leaf, and the same goes for other automakers too. Coming up next, it's time to answer some of your letters. We'll be back right after this. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. And now it's time for You Said It. TCB1468 saw our story that Tesla is going to build electric cars in the gigantic Numi plant in Fremont, California, and writes in to ask, is 5 million square feet a lot for 20,000 cars or not enough square feet? TCB, 5 million square feet is massive overkill to build only 20,000 cars a year. To quote an old German proverb, that's like shooting sparrows with cannons. And remember, that's 5 million square feet under roof. The grounds surrounding those buildings is even bigger. Once Tesla realizes how much it's paying in heating and lighting and electrical and maintenance and security, it's going to wonder why it ever moved into such a big facility. You know, Tesla probably doesn't even need half a million square feet to build its 20,000 cars. Chuck Grenchy wasn't all that impressed by the new TV commercial for the Lexus LFA that we showed you yesterday. I can't see how the LFA commercial is anything positive by breaking a glass. Am I missing some sophisticated engineering phenomenon? Or is the Lexus just one screaming tenor? Chuck, you didn't miss a thing. The idea of shattering the glass is just to get people to look at the ad and talk about it with their friends. CBA 1067950 wants to know, how is Chrysler making money? That doesn't make any sense. They don't have new cars. Where did this sudden interest in Chrysler come from? CBA, even though Chrysler doesn't have new products, it still has been able to cut incentives by an average of $2,000 per vehicle. How? Because now it's only building cars based on demand. It's no longer flooding the market and doesn't have to discount them as much. So when you get two grand more per vehicle and build over a million vehicles, that alone drops $2 billion to the bottom line. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. We really appreciate getting them. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.